Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 2. Uh, this is episode number 67 if I'm not mistaken and it's the last episode of this uh, LP. But don't worry, it's not all over for Civilization 2. I will be starting a new Let's Play next week and the name of this Let's Play will be One City Challenge. And uh, in this LP we'll be playing with one single city only and of course uh, that means it will be much 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 more challenging and hopefully also fun and maybe inspiring as well for you to try it yourselves uh, obviously you can't win um, using the world domination in such a let's play or in such a game because you just have one city and you can't uh, conquer any other cities but you can win using the space race victory and that's what we will do but uh, enough about that i will post episode number zero tomorrow on sunday so be sure not to miss that and i'll ask for some feedback as well so please uh, make some comments in the comment section below on on tomorrow's video but if you wish you can also comment on today's video and let's return to this uh I'll repeat this last episode where I would like to show you everything or at least a lot of things which I have forgotten and are still interesting. So in the previous episode we have uh, won actually, the game came to the end, but um, we were not uh, able to use nuclear weapons because of the STI defense here in Little Bighorn. And because I captured this city, I think, using just uh, tanks. So I would like to show you how the nuclear weapons work and how does it look like. So I've built a nuclear missile. It's uh, flashing here in Locarno. And I will uh, use it to destroy the three forks. Actually, let's have a look first. What does this city have as a defense? It has one mechanized infantry unit, but nothing else. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's go back, uh, stay there, and let's have a quick look on the nuclear missile. It has a movement rate of 16, is destroyed after attacking, but the attack strength is 99, which basically means it destroys everything in its way. So let's go ahead and uh, activate this unit and attack three forks. <laughs> that was a quite nice uh, animation. And as you can see, it destroyed all the units inside the city. Well, there was only one, so it's uh, quite hard to see that it destroyed all of them. But it did. We'll see it on the little bighorn example later on. And it also creates a lot of pollution from one skull to, to, to many, to 20, I think, <laughs> around the city. Okay. And uh, as you have seen in the last episode, we were not able to use the nuclear missile on Little Bighorn because they have something I can show you right now. They have the SDI defense. And that prevents us from using the nuclear missile on this uh, city. And also, if you try to destroy the SDI defense with your spy, it tells you, the game tells you it's not possible. But uh, I have been playing around uh, with it and I found out there is a possibility to plant a nuclear device inside such a city as well. And I will show it to you in just a moment. But before that, I would like to read more about the nuclear missile. The description, I mean. The deployment of atomic bombs at Nagasaki and Hiroshima at the end of Second World War changed the world's standards for measuring military power. Nuclear weapons can eradicate ground forces and armored divisions can and flatten cities with their awesome explosive power. In the years following the Second World War, arsenals of nuclear weapons were built up rapidly by opposing nations, each fearing the capabilities of the other. This massive arms 
buildup has acted as a deterrent to full-scale war since all the governments involved are aware of the consequences should such a war take place, the threat imposed by a huge nuclear arsenals of the world powers may one day be eradicated by the development of the Strategic Defense Initiative or SDI, a system designed to destroy enemy missiles in flight before they can reach their targets. Okay, so back to how can we use the nuclear weapons on cities with SDI defense? The answer to this question is pretty simple. You can uh, use your spy, which is obviously the most uh, destructive and versatile unit in this game. And what a spy can do is also plant a nuclear device. So let's go ahead and try to do that. This could cause a major international incident if we are detected. Continue anyway? Well, there are only two nations and this one's about to perish, so there will be no international incident as such. So let's continue. And our spy was captured before completing her mission. Obviously, this uh, capability of the spies is so powerful that the game has a randomness factor and uh, only one of a uh, few, I don't know really what uh, the exact probability is, but only one of few attempts is successful. So I have also built a few uh, spies, one, two, three, four, at least six, I think, and moved them to Locarno so that we can try again and again and again. And if you are wondering, I have... Uh, reloaded one of the previous saves. I think this was the end of episode 65 and I've just built the nuclear missile and a few few spies in the surrounding cities and moved them all to Locarno. So let's go ahead and uh, try it again. Plant the nuclear device and continue. Was captured again. Okay, attempt number three. Plant nuclear device. Unsuccessful attempt. Attempt number four. I hope this will be enough. No. <laughs> Captured. Okay, let's try again. Come on. Is this my last spy? Continue, please. No. Oh, come on. I used up all my spies. One last chance. This has to work. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sure it works. And I will pause the recording now. And re actually, I can just reload the game. So let's load the nuke. Save. And... Uh, whoops. Uh, Go to standard zoom. You can fortify over here. And I'll be trying this as long as necessary. Come on. Come on, this must be possible. I have seen it happen more than once. <laughs> okay, this is the so called presentation effect. When I tried this, I was about to say when I tried this before, it worked after a few attempts. I mean, two or three or maybe four. Now we have uh, made, I don't know, at least 15 attempts or so. Uh, well, maybe not so many, maybe 10. Mysterious nuclear blast in Little Big Horn. As you can see, the city is now surrounded with pollution. It can go all the way up to, I don't know, 20 skulls or so. But all the units in this city were destroyed. Actually, I haven't shown you how many units were in the city before. But as you can see, there's none currently. And if I load up the save again and go to standard zoom, 
use the spy again. This is the original situation. There were one, two, three defending units in this city. And just because we can, let's try this again. No, captured. Okay, one more try because it's so funny. No, one more. <laughs> it's addictive. It's addictive. Okay, one more mysterious blast and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skulls. Anyway, I think we had enough fun. Actually, it's been 11 minutes since the start of this episode already. So I should move on and uh, tell you more about uh, the space victory. The space victory, which is disabled, by the way, in this LP, we have disabled it uh, by, by a setting called Bloodlust at the beginning of the game, works in a way that you build a spaceship and you send it uh, on the way to Alpha Centauri. And uh, the first civilization to arrive there wins the space race and the game. And to build the spaceship, you have to use three components. The SS structural, SS component and SS module. And SS stands for spaceship, I would say. So the first one, the easiest or the cheapest one, sorry, are the as a structurals, they require spaceflight, cost 80 shields and zero maintenance. The structural parts of a spaceship are the frame to which all other parts of the spaceship are attached. All spaceship components and modules must be connected to a structural section in order to function. Components and modules not connected to the frame are outlined in the red on the spaceship display. That's not true, I haven't seen the red outline, but uh, probably it's from an older version of the game. It would be actually nice, but uh, it doesn't matter that much. Then we can also build uh, spaceship modules. They, oops, I wanted actually to show you SS component first. They cost twice as much, 160 shields, also no components, uh, no maintenance, <laughs> sorry, and require plastics as a prerequisite. Spaceship components provide the motive power of a spaceship. There are two types, propulsion and fuel. Propulsion components are the spaceship engines and each fuel component provides enough fuel to run one engine. Every propulsion component requires a fuel component in order to function. At minimum, a spaceship requires one of each type of component. The more engines the spaceship possesses, the faster it will arrive at its destination. Okay, and the last one are the spaceship modules. Uh, they cost, again, twice as much, require the superconductor civilization advance and also don't cost a penny. Modules are the central components of a spaceship. There are three types, habitation, life support and solar panels. Each habitation module provides living space for 10,000 colonists. Each life support module provides enough food, water and other basic requirements to support the colonists in one habitation module. Both habitation and life support modules require power in order to operate and each solar panel module provides enough energy to run two other modules. At the minimum, every spaceship requires one of each type of module in order to be successful in its mission. And that's exactly what we'll do. Probably one of each modules, then probably one, two, three or four uh, components, I mean pair of components, and 15 plus uh, structurals. Okay, but uh, you'll see that in the next LP, so be sure to check that once it uh, comes out. And uh, so I think we've covered that. What else do we need to cover? Oh, somebody asked me to show also the cities with uh, a lot of buildings or uh, um, other things like um, wonders of the world. So for example in Bellinzona here we have the Great Library, Women's Suffrage and United Nations and a couple of city improvements as well. And if you click on this button, which we haven't done yet I think, you can view the, the, the city itself. So here it is, Bellinzona in the year 1875 and uh, 
here's the women's uh, suffrage statue or whatever that is and uh, this is the united nations i would say <laughs> it's not proportional against uh, the city walls that's for sure and i think this one would be the great library i guess so this is definitely marketplace this is a temple and the rest i don't recognize actually this might be the courthouse this would be a factory what's that um, a library, I, I would say. Okay, there are more wonders of the world in Basel. So here we have uh, Pyramids, Great Wall, Sun Tzu's War Academy, Marco Polo's Embassy, Michelangelo's Chapel, Magellan's Expedition, Leonardo's Workshop, Adam Smith's Trading Company, Darwin's Voyage, and Statue of Liberty. So if we have a look at them, these are the pyramids, obviously. The Great Wall would be there. Statue of Liberty, Magellan's Expedition, Sun Tzu's War Academy, Marco Polo's Embassy. I think this is the Leonardo's Workshop, probably. And these two, hmm, this would be a cathedral, I would say. Um, and one more. Adam Smith Trading Company and soon uh, we have seen that yeah not sure but uh, you get the idea and I think the city with most of the wonders of the world and other structures as well um, is Zurich so let's have a look wow this city is pretty full so uh, on the top left corner, in the top left corner, we have uh, the Apollo program, I guess. This would be the Hoover's Dam, which is uh, somehow strange on grasslands. Um, Copernicus Observatory. Then we have the Manhattan Project, Eiffel Tower, the Colossus. I think this is the King's Richard's Crusade. Hmm, what else? Um, this is definitely something as well, but I don't know what. This might be the SETI program. And this would be Isaac's Newton College, I would say. What else? I'm not so sure. These are the superhighways. This is the offshore platform, the harbor, I would say. No idea what that is. Oh, that's a coastal fortress. And uh, this is definitely something, no idea what. Um, Colosseum? Do we have a Colosseum? No, we don't. So what's that? Well, that's also something I don't know what it is. But uh, maybe you know and can tell me. Let's actually check if we have any other cities with... Uh, wonders so uh, basel persepolis okay has one two at least and um, that's about it so let's go to persepolis as well that's this city over here it has hanging gardens and the lighthouse let's have a look so these are the hanging gardens they look actually very sweet and uh, the lighthouse is over there what we haven't seen in the city view is the oracle because uh, because we never built it. But uh, since we have so much money, we can just buy it right now. And the turn. Um, fortify all of you. And the turn. And have a look at the oracle as well.
okay i think we have seen that uh, video already but i didn't want to stop it anymore and the oracle would be okay am i blind or what okay it's not here not there <laughs> This is embarrassing. Where's the oracle? I mean, it should look like... Okay. Anyone who sees the oracle, please let me know in the comments below. Because I don't see it. Just a few more seconds. And I still don't see it. Yeah, I'm officially blind. Okay. Good, so that's that. We have seen the spaceship parts, we have seen the nuclear missile. I have told you about the new LP coming out, the One City Challenge. And the last thing we haven't done are the terrain type descriptions. Now, there's a lot of terrain types and special resources as well, and I won't be reading the description of all of them, because that will take at least half an hour, and I don't want to make the episode too long. But I will go into every single one of them and click on the description. And uh, you can pause the video and read it for yourselves if you wish to do so, of course. So let's start with the buffalo. Uh, by the way, I will be, I will not be reading all this and I will not be reading the description. But I will tell you if uh, such uh, terrain types are useful for uh, the upcoming LP. Because uh, one of the main tasks which will have in the upcoming LP is to find a suitable uh, site for the single city we will have and the best city sites are with a lot of special resources you can have up to four special resources in a city I think some of the cities we have do have such uh, things so for example Zurich over here has silk wells um, this probably isn't a special resource. And fish. But Basel maybe does? No, not really. But there are... Oh, Zug over here, for example. Yeah. So, uh, one, two, three, four special resources next to Zug. Uh, if we go into the city view, you can see that all four of them are being worked on. So, the city which has the most uh, special resources is a, is a good candidate and if it can have a lot of uh, rivers as well all the better uh, i mean having uh, three special resources and lots of rivers is better than having four special resources of course you have a you should have a healthy mix of other terrain types as well so you should have uh, plains and grasslands so that you can produce enough food you could have also some forests um, for initial shield production and you definitely need two or three hills as well um, to produce a lot of shields in the late game but uh, if you don't have them it's not end of the world there is a possibility to transform terrain using your engineers and uh, you can transform let's say a mountain into hills you can transform hills into plains and plains into grassland i think and also the other way around you can transform the grasslands into uh, forests but also uh, using mining with uh, just um, settlers would do that as well but using the transform terrain of the engineers you can transform grassland directly to hills i believe and so on and so on. You can transform also the icy terrain, like the uh, glacier to tundra and tundra to desert and desert to um, plains, I believe, and then plains again to grassland. And you can play around with that. What's also important uh, is that uh, the special resources appear on all terrain types, on all the basic terrain types except for the grasslands where you can only see a shield uh, which is not a special resource by the way and uh, these uh, special resources come in patterns and uh, like this one for example and it goes well i i'm not certain how the pattern 
looks like, but you can look it up somewhere on the internet. And if you are in a, in a, such a terrain, for example, which is close to Zug, and this spot would be um, grassland instead of forest, and it would be just plain grassland or a grassland with a shield, um, so that doesn't matter, and you would um, transform the terrain to something else, there is a good chance that uh, it will transform into a terrain with a special resource. So, I don't know, depending on uh, what kind of terrain we'll have, we might uh, see that in the upcoming uh, LP as well. But let's return, oh, 25 minutes already, okay, this will be a, a bit longer episode. Let's return over here and uh, I will quickly quick uh, click through all the terrain types and tell you a little bit about them. So Buffalo is good because it has a lot of shields early in the game and can produce two food uh, with the irrigation, so that's perfect. It's not good because of trade and you should, if you have the possibility at all, look for special resources which produce a lot of trade. The trade will be the key element of uh, winning the game in the upcoming LP. So Buffalo is good, it's not the best. The best would be um, special resources with lots of trade. Okay, I will click on the description here. Feel free to pause the video and read it for yourself. There's uh, actually very interesting uh, facts about all these uh, special resources and uh, terrains, so I encourage you to read it. I don't have time to do it in this episode. Coal is another special resource on hills terrain. It produces a lot of shields um, already as hills, I think three with mining and additional two with, uh, with the special resource. Again, no trade, so it's a, it's a resource which is uh, yeah mediocre. Um, not so good, but if I didn't have any other choice, I would take it as well. Then we have the normal terrain, desert. You should avoid those in uh, one city challenge because it's it's a bad um, terrain, produces zero food, only one shield, and you can put it up to one food, but uh, anything less than two is basically a loss uh, for you. Okay, it can have a desert oil, which produces a lot of shields, but you can you can actually produce shields in many different ways. So shields, and especially shield uh, special resources, are not that important. Much more important are the resources which... Uh, oops, and I think I haven't clicked on the desert description. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go also a little bit down. Then back, back, and the desert oil as well for you to read, and I already forgot what I was saying, so um, yeah, about the trade resources. Oceans themselves already themselves already produce a lot of trade too, and fish don't um, improve that, they improve only the production of food, but still it's a pretty decent special resource, and I wouldn't mind having it in the One City Challenge game. And then we have a Normal forest, that's a, that's a good resource, good terrain, sorry, and uh, with uh, quite good uh, special resources. Both pheasant and silk are quite good. So this is the description, feel free to read that. Of course you have to pause the video. N now we have fruit, which appears on the jungle terrain. This produces a lot of food and... Uh, Food is something you have to take care about, but it's it's second after the trade. So trade is the most important. Food, I would say, is the second most important. And uh, shields are important, but you have just so many possibilities there that uh, you don't have to worry about special resources producing more shields. Okay, there's a quite short description for this over here. And let's go to first. Uh, first and game are the two special resources for the tundra terrain. Actually, they are both quite good. Uh, the, the first have two food, which is uh, like uh, grassland, for example, and free trade, which is uh, which is excellent. So, if I would have um, tundra in the 
potential city site, uh, I would definitely take it if it would have furs on it. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it's a bad idea to have uh, the tundra terrain. The game is not as good as furs because it has no trade. But if I would have just one square uh, like this in my city site, I would not be unhappy. Let's say it like this. Okay. Go back. Then we have gems. These are on the uh, jungle terrain, just like the fruit is. They produce a lot of trade, so it's a good resource. No shields and only one food, so overall, I, I think it's okay. It's not the best. Uh, we'll get to the best later, but it's it's fine. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't mind having it. Wouldn't mind having it in the one city challenge game. Then we have the glacier. Don't use glacier. It doesn't produce anything. Zero, 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 as you can see. It has um, ivory, which is a, a good special resource, so I wouldn't mind that. Actually, in one of my test games uh, earlier, I had ivory, uh, and it uh, worked pretty well. But the glacier itself uh, does not. And I think I have forgotten gotten ah. did we see the description of gems probably yes i have to click on that straight away so that uh, i don't forget because uh, i lose the precious time okay the glacier oil is uh, not a good resource it only produces shields i encourage you not using it gold on the mountains terrain is excellent for trade and if you can get it i would definitely recommend it because it produces a lot of trade here's the description and let's go back grassland with the description that's your primary tile or terrain it can be transformed into hills, into forest. Uh, it can in be used uh, for trade as well with roads. And uh, it's uh, easy to move through and produces a lot of food. Basically all-purpose uh, terrain. And even better alternative is the grassland with a shield, which produces one sh extra shield. This is the description. And if uh, a river is flowing through a grassland or a grassland through the, with the shield, that's a perfect combination. Hills are also very important. Even hills without any special resources are good to have. At least one, two or maybe even three. Uh, because you want to have a lot of uh, shield production in the late game. And uh, with coal you can have uh, even plus two compared to the hills, which we have seen before. By the way, let's click on the description as well, just in case I forget later. And the wine is one of the best, in my opinion, uh, special resources in the entire game, um, together with gold, silk, um, ivory, and, and things like that. Iron is the second special resource in the mountains terrain, produces a lot of shields which is not so necessary for us. So it's a secondary special resource. Ivory, as I said, is quite good. Has only one food and one shield, but uh, for a glacier that's already quite okay. But it has, uh, it produces uh, four shield arrows, which is uh, perfect. Let's click on that. You can read it if you wish. And uh, did I click on iron? I forgot already again. Okay. Jungle terrain. Um, well, I would not recommend having the jungle terrain without any uh, special resources. If you have gems, for example, that's a very good uh, option. If you have just plain jungle, transform it into grassland using the irrigation command. You can do that also with settlers so very early in the game. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing that. So don't worry about uh, 
jungles and uh, swamps. They can be transformed into grassland. Mountains, however, for example, uh, well, can be transformed using the engineers, but it takes a hell lot of time. Yeah, so engineer transformation to hills and then hills to plains and plains to grassland and you'll spend like 50 turns doing that. So mountains you should probably consider as a bad tile. Oasis in the desert is not so bad, but it's also not good. If you can, avoid it. If you can't, then, um, well, start a new game or something. <laughs> okay, ocean. Ocean, actually, when I first played this game, I never wanted to build coastal cities. Um, because, you know, it produces one food and uh, zero shields, so it's basically nothing. But back then I didn't know about the power of the trade. And uh, having a coastal city in the one city challenge is also not bad, especially if you can have uh, fish or even better whales. It's, uh, it's a good tile. Not best. But very good. It's a it's second best. Uh, you can increase the shield production by the offshore platform. You can increase the food production by the harbor. And the trade is um, perfect. You don't have to irrigate it or uh, build roads on the ocean or anything. It's uh, ready to use. Basically. Okay. Well, I will uh, leave it here for a moment. And now scroll down so that you can read the whole description. Okay, go back. Uh, let's uh, have a look at peat. This is the swamp terrain uh, special resource, concentrating mostly on shields, so not uh, great, but good. Then we have pheasant. This is uh, mostly a food um, based special resource in the forest terrain. Also not great, but very good. Back to the plains. I uh, don't know. Plains are actually quite good. I mean, they are comparable to grassland because grassland has a 2-0-0 and this basically um, transforms into one one zero into plane so you get less food you get one more shield you get some trade by using um, roads and so on and so on i mean a healthy mix of grassland and plains is probably what you are looking for um, here's the description as well okay let's go back and silk is one of my favorite it has one food only, but if you have grassland, then you will have enough extra food. It has uh, uh, two shields, which can be increased to three, for example, using railroads. And it has three trade arrows, which is excellent. So I would recommend using uh, um, silk or taking the silk if you can, whenever possible. Okay, then we have spice, which also produces a lot of trade, a lot of food. So if you have swamp with spice, uh, don't transform it to anything else. I guess uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to have. This is the description. I again forgot if I showed you the description of silk, but uh, I think I did. If not, then I'm sorry. The swamp itself is... Um, not so good, you know, only produces one food and zero shields and zero trade. So if you get it, you should transform it into either forest or plains or grassland ASAP. I guess transforming to grassland with settlers using the irrigation command is the most uh, reasonable option. Then we have the tundra which is not great, it has only one foot. So unless you have first, I would say, or possibly game as the second option, I would avoid it and go somewhere else. Let's uh, open up the description as well. 
Okay, I'm almost positive that I forgot to show you the description of the swamp, so that's it. I should have first uh, gone through all these uh, and then show the descriptions in one go, but I guess it's late to do that already. Now, whales are excellent, excellent uh, special resources. They have enough food, enough shields, and a lot of trade. They are perfect. And they don't have to be worked on uh, with your settlers early in the game. So, whenever you see whales, look for other special resources nearby because it might just make a perfect uh, city site. Wheat is good as well, but. Uh, I think it's even better when you transform it, because when you transform planes into, uh, into forest, I believe, then uh, you also um, carry over the special resourceness of the tile, and um, wheat transforms into silk, which is a, a perfect resource. So early in the game you can use it as a food producing uh, tile, and then a bit later transform it into forest, which will increase the shield production and uh, trade production as well. That's the description over here. Let's go back, and I think we have one more, which is wine, which is an excellent, excellent special resource, because it gives you one food, three shields with the mining, because you can mine it just like any other hills, and four trade arrows. So. That's my number one um, special resource. Okay, and of course, uh, you probably forgot already everything I told you, so uh, you can look it up in the Civilization 2 poster. And I have uh, some pictures over here of the terrain. Uh, here are all the terrain types, and you can see that for food, the best terrain is the grassland, and uh, when your city is sl uh, small, you should uh, work on grassland mostly so that it grows uh, very quick. For shields, um, the forest is not bad, but I would recommend uh, using it only if it has a special resource as well. And the second one is hills, which doesn't produce any shields by default, but the result of mining is plus three shields, so if you need to increase the shield production significantly, then I would definitely recommend hills. Okay, then for trade, uh, everything has zero, except for the ocean, which has two. That's why ocean, even without any special resources, is not a bad idea. Uh, however, the fact that all other terrain types have a trade zero by default, you have to or should, if you want to win the one city challenge, look for uh, special resources which increase trade. And you also should have a lot of uh, grassland, plains, and yeah, these two which can benefit from roads which increase the trade. Plus, um, if you can, you should get a lot of uh, rivers because rivers act basically as roads and add a trade bonus and movement bonus, but they do stack with the roads. So after you discover bridge building, you can build a road on top of uh, the river and you get two basic uh, trade arrows and then you can increase it with uh, wonders of the world and other things. Basically, rivers are always good. And here you can see the possible special resources and what does the engineer transformation do to the terrain. You can also transform terrain not uh, using the engineer transformation only, but also using irrigation or mining. So, for example, forest can be transformed to plains using the irrigation command. And uh, as I said, jungle and swamp can be transformed easily to irrigation very early in the game. So don't be afraid of them um, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's uh, standard terrain. So I would recommend a healthy mix of grassland, plains, uh, and hills. These are the three most important uh, terrain types. If you get a few forest fields, it's not bad. 
And if you get a few ocean fields or tiles, it's also not bad. The others are not good unless you have a useful special resource on them. Okay. And uh, talking about special resources, here is the view of the special resources. And uh, let's have a look at this column over here showing the default trade bonus. So as you can see, fish have two, but that's not a bonus. That's a that's a attribute of the ocean uh, terrain type. So that's not good. Furs are good. Gems are very good. Gold is excellent. Ivory is superb. And silk, spice, whales and wine are also OK. So if you can get any of those, um, it's already fine. If you can get two of those, it's perfect. OK, from the others, I would recommend also or I would be uh, satisfied when I would get buffaloes. I would not say no to coal. I would take pheasant as well because you can transform it to buffalo, for example, if you wish. Um, I would also be happy with. Uh, with iron because I can transform it to wine, which is uh, the resource number one. I would be happy with uh, peat, I guess, as well, again, because I can transform it into some useful things. I would be definitely happy with wheat as well, because I can transform it to silk and the rest I would not recommend. So the ones which you probably should ignore are, well, Buffalo, OK, coal, OK, fish, OK, fruit, you can transform to silk as well. So that's fine. Furs is OK, pheasant is OK. OK, so musk, osk, ox is something which is not so useful. Then um, the oasis, I guess, is not so useful. Both oils are not that good unless you want to transform glacier into tundra and have furs, but I think you can do that only using the engineer later in the game. So it's not not that nice. And, um, and that's about it. Everything else is OK. However, uh, pay attention to to a healthy mix of uh, starting special resources, because uh, if you get, I don't know, two buffaloes and uh, two times wheat, then you will have a lot of food and uh, and a lot of uh, shields, but no trade. And you have to use um, settlers and engineers, which you well, which might not be the priority at the moment and takes a lot of time. OK, but uh, that's about it. I think I have uh, told you everything I wanted to tell you. And ha, we've spent 50 minutes. I really didn't expect this would take so long, but uh, I guess you plan and the life uh, changes what you have uh, planned. OK, so don't forget to watch the tomorrow's episode zero of the uh, next LP, the One City Challenge, where I will show you a few starting locations and ask you to help me choose one of them or choose a completely um, random uh, map, which will be also one of the options. OK, so for now, I say bye bye and see you in the next Civilization 2 LP. Till then, bye bye.